All right, folks, we are live on the live stream. Welcome, everyone, uh, to the Herbal Prepper Show. And this is going to be a cool one. This is going to be one of the most controversial topics that we've ever done in the history of my YouTube channel. And no, uh, we're not talking about uh, guns and political topics or anything like that. We're going to be talking about canned meat, as you see here. This is 18-year-old tuna fish that's been canned by my sister-in-law. Uh, this is a topic that I am very unfamiliar with. We've done a lot of over the past year, we've been doing some canning. Uh, my wife has been doing a lot of the canning. She's been making a lot of jams over the past year with her rose garden. She takes rose petals, makes jam out of it. And then uh, most recently we did some uh, various vegetables. We did uh, prepper pickles and we've done some dill beans and other things like that. But we've been a little bit scared to start off with the meat canning. And so I recently started a Discord server. There's a link in the description box. And we've been talking with a lot of people that visit this channel. And one of the people that came over to the Discord server was Denise. And Denise is super into canning. And we've had a lot of different discussions. And she's Denise says, hey, let's talk about canned meats. And so that's what we're going to do. It was so much fun talking on the Discord server. We had to bring it over here on the primary channel and just get right down to it. So we're going to be talking about a lot of controversial things. We'll talk about botanism. We'll talk about various types of meats to do, all the equipment that you're going to need, and go from there. So without further ado, welcome to the live stream, Denise. And here we go. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> How was that intro? That was, that was uh, yeah, awesome. that was, you make canning look very attractive. <laughs> yeah, we're, we, we, we're making canning cool. So, and you've been, yes. you've been making canning cool for a while now, right? Hey, yeah, trying to. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> let's let's try to mainstream canning right now in the next hour. So this should be cool. Yes. I see everyone in the chat room. Uh, gr greetings, everyone. Greetings, Freddie. Greetings, Wendy and Susan and all sorts of people. I think this is one of the streams that my, my wife is going to be watching in real time. I have a lot of other family members watching. So we're going to learn a lot on this one. So Hi, Mrs. Prepper. Yeah. <laughs> is your mom on? My mom will be on and she is a moderator. So if my mom oh. bans you, that's... That's, oh, that's how it happens. Oh, so. <laughs> no, I want to hear some story. I bet she has some stories. <laughs> yeah, we're trying to get her on the stream. She's been a little bit, uh, I have to, she's, she's making uh, demands and wants a lot of money for it. So <laughs> no, oh, but we'll, we'll get her on yeah. eventually. Well, <laughs> I thought to start off, why, why don't we go with like more of an introduction? Uh, you, you don't have a YouTube channel yourself, but you're super into mm -hmm. prepping and you're super into mm -hmm. canning and especially the pressurized meat canning. So maybe we could kind of talk a little bit about your background and then go from there. Okay. Um, I grew up uh, in a suburban area until I was in seventh grade. And then we moved to a farm. Uh, well, my dad called it a toy farm. It was just six acres and we had chickens and rabbits and he had a huge garden and we were really into uh, living off the land was his, you know, that we were trying to do. So, and I loved the food preservation part of it. Both of my parents were farmers. And so they just knew. So we did some canning, but most everything was frozen. Um, and then we did some dehydrating, but we were just, so I grew up just kind of really being into it. And then um, I've always had a big pantry, but we've never, uh, you know, I just didn't get into prepping until about 12, 15 years ago, I think now. And um I had had it before, pre, before that I had, we'd had some, a freezer, two times a freezer broke down on us. And I was, uh, uh, you know, the second time, you know, all, all the food went bad. I didn't catch it in time. I didn't know it was broken until like after a couple of days and, and it was, you know, all the food was spoiled. So in a rage. I don't know. I just remember seeing red and, and um, uh, I remember yelling as God is my witness. I will never, you know, use a freezer again. Uh, so uh, let me see. But the, oh, the other thing was with the freezer, I was kind yeah. of thinking it wasn't a good idea for us because we didn't have a good space for it. The reason they broke down is because we had it in the garage and it gets really hot there. And so we had um, a, I'd just could the idea of having a freezer that takes electricity every month. So you have yeah. to pay every month for it. So not, you know, um, not against freezers. I know the freezers now, especially the chest freezers are really efficient. But um, that's just something when we started prepping, I didn't want to do. So I started looking into uh, canning, meat canning. And I was afraid, like everybody else, of botulism, of the pressure canner exploding, you know, all of those um, 
fears. So, uh, but I was, I thankfully we have a master food preserver uh, extension office from the USDA that I had uh, classes that I could attend. So I attended mm -hmm. those, I read everything because I was just determined to, you know, like a kid, I was thinking it was like a kid who wants to drive, but then people tell him all oh, the dangers of driving which is good. It's good to know dangers of stuff, but you're still determined to drive. Yeah. Yeah. So I was determined to have real meat. Uh, so I worked through those fears. And then once we got started, we just realized when I figured out how to cook it, not the canning wasn't as hard as the figuring out the learning curve of learning to cook with it. So uh, we started just really enjoying it and 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 just the idea of how much money we were saving and time and everything well, we're gonna i know we're gonna go through all that yeah but um anyway that's where so, i got started so it started from a bad a bad thing happened where you the mm -hmm. freezer went out and i think that's probably mm -hmm. common for a lot of preppers on why they would want to get into canned meats because i from what i know a lot of preppers have various meats stored in their in their freezers this isn't an anti-freezer live stream. right no 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 i yeah <laughs> I, I totally and, yeah. and it's it, power outages happen for all of us mm -hmm. and you could run it on the generator for a while, but you may run mm -hmm. out of gas of it. And at that point, what do you do? So I think that's like the main, uh, that's one of the talking, talking points I think we're going to get to is why, why can meat? Why should we <laughs> can meat? Uh, and I think that's one of them for power loss, for not having to, uh, if you don't have room to have a freezer, like if you're living in an apartment or whatever for a backup freezer, it seems like another one. What are some, uh, uh, some uh, and you've done a from what we've talked, you've done a really good job as far as integrating it into your normal cooking, which uh, mm -hmm. which is which is the way to do it. It seems like what why should we can meat though? What, what's the well the one thing if you have a freezer and, and again yeah I I can't stress enough I I completely understand uh, why people would have a freezer that's a that's a good thing but if your freezer stops working or if we, we have a power outage that's my biggest concern about prepping is of having a power outage. So if you have a power outage, you can uh, take that meat and can it if you think that it's going to be long term. I mean, so that's another option. You have the generator going for but what if it's, you know, a couple weeks or, or something, then you can and it's starting to thaw out, then you can, then you can can it. So if there's a if there's a power outage, then uh, and if you don't have the generator, it'd be nice to have a set of canning supplies. Hey, really quick, we're going to have to can this meat before it goes bad, and yes, uh, so kind of as a backup measure for uh, a power it outage just for your freezer then. Yep, exactly. Yeah, and so, uh, we have a lot of stuff that we're going to be talking about on this stream. I know that we you provided some links over here. There's a lot of great resources. One of them uh, links in the description box of this video. Uh, we have the. Let's see. This is the USDA Complete Guide for Home Canning, the 2015 version. There's a lot of great videos on YouTube. We're going to be getting talking about some of those. Uh, our good friend Prepper Potpourri, Potpourri has a good one as far as the uh, facts, not fear with regard to botulism, which we're going to be talking yes. about later. And then another uh, well-known prepper, Alaskan Prepper, has a lot of can, uh, especially meat canning information as mm -hmm. well. So if this is a new topic for you, there's a lot of great information uh, available on YouTube. We're going to just kind of dive into it and find out uh, kind of lessons learned from Denise in this one and uh, go from there. But make sure you check out both uh, Prepper Potpourri and, and Alaska Prepper. They have some really good stuff on meat canning in addition to other uh, Prepper channels as well. So mm -hmm. let's see. And I know there's, there's I see comments already coming in the comment section too. To oh, okay. too so, so uh, let's well, see. let me go through. The, yeah, I can go through the other reasons why to can meat. That's, yeah. that's just one. <laughs> I've got a million of them. There's many. There's a uh, hundred reasons to can meat. Well, right I think people one. just <laughs> might not think about it's. Um, it uses less fuel. So when you go to he cook, it you just happen to heat it up. It's already thawed out and it's ready. It's already cooked. So you, you could eat it straight out of the jar. My husband, when he's really busy, he just opens up a jar and goes to town. <laughs> and um, it uh, so and then it also saves time in meal prep. You've already prepped. Um, you can have really quality meat, whatever is important to you with the quality of the meat, you can have that. You can have a variety. I mean, sky's the limit. You can have, if you, you know, most foods come in big quantities like a moose or somebody butchers a cow or a pig or something. Uh, and, and even vegetable harvests come in, in all at once typically not, I mean, not always, but so to can, to preserve food is I think such an important skill. 
Um, so yeah, you can have, you can have anything, yak meat. If you, you catch fish, you know, you could can up, if you catch a big old halibut, you know, whatever, all of that you can, you can do. And then it saves money because you're, you're using the same jar, you know, using the same jar, like glass jar over and over. And if you get these, uh, Tatler, get these Tatler lids, yep. I don't know if you kind of see those. Yeah, uh, yeah, link those are reusable. Yeah. I'm yes, I, I, have, I have a link to the Tatler lids in the description box too. Oh. Those are because lids are, and we could talk about that too. As far as the, there seems to be some canning shortages going on as far as jars yes. and lids and all of that. Yeah, and it's crazy. My wife, uh, she, I mean, she, again, she's been doing a lot of canning for jams, but she's like, "Do not throw that glass away. Do not throw those lids away." And they're 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 uh, super valuable. They're next to N95 masks. They're probably the, some of the hardest things to get. Huh? Yeah, that's so you, you can just can stuff and it saves money because you're using the same jars over and over and over. I've used these jars. In fact, when I started, I got a bunch of jars from a yard sale. Somebody yeah. was, I got, I got my canner from the yard sale and I got a bunch of jars and they've been going. I mean, I've had a few breakages that I'm sure were due to um, actually microwave. I, I'm pretty sure I had more, I asked the food preservers and I had more problems with jars breaking than seem uh, than most people do and i think it was actually uh canning jars the glass jars are actually not microwavable and i was using quart jars to make yogurt and i'd have them in there for a long time so i'm sure putting jars in the microwave for just a, a minute you know just a little bit of time to heat things up is okay but yeah but you don't want to do that so these jars i i've had in fact i was just looking at some i'm like oh those are from I didn't buy jars that were that shape. So yeah. these are from the original batch. So it saves money. And then the last thing is just my <laughs> controversial. You talked about me being controversial. <laughs> yes, Here we go. Controversial. Everybody we go. ready? Everybody ready? Put your <laughs> hands on the keyboard because you're going to get mad at me. <laughs> I am going to try my attempt to convince you that home canned foods are safer than commercially canned foods. Uh oh, don't. <laughs> so don't there we the go. Don't click the brown button. Yeah, just get. Let's get yeah, don't. Can. Don't. Just let, well, hear me out. Hear me I, out. I definitely <laughs> like the idea that you know when you go to Costco or something because uh, in historically, like when I, I go to Costco and get tuna fish or we get uh, corned beef or whatever it is, I, I don't know yeah. what. I don't really know what the, what's, what's in that meat. When it seems mm -hmm. like if you were to do it yourself, that you know exactly what it is because you got it over at the butcher. Uh, yes, I guess another disclaimer on this video. This probably isn't the most uh, vegan friendly live stream that we've done because we're talking canned <laughs> meats. But I do have um, I do, do have, have some... pinto beans. Pinto beans. Okay, there we go. Pinto beans. So and, now and, and pickles are are, are oh, yeah. vegan. So yeah, I have all I've been doing all kinds of beans now. Beans, you know, for food storage, they're fine dry. You can it's better to store them dry. But I can them for a couple reasons. One is to have them just ready to go. Like then I just heat, I make a thing called cowboy beans where I saute a little bit of um, bacon and then I put the pinto beans and salt and pepper, maybe some cheese and serve that with cornbread. That is a really great meal and it's quick. Uh, so that's why. The other thing is, is if you're canning and you discover you have room in your, like I hate, I hate to can with without the canner being clear full. So you can mm -hmm. throw uh, in a pint jar, it's a half a cup. Oh, this is hamburger. In a pint jar, it's half a cup of, it's one quarter of the volume. So if you put dried beans in, you, rin you, know, you rinse them off and uh, put them in there with boiling water, a little salt if you want. I use a half a teaspoon per pint. Uh, so then a quart jar, if you're doing quarts, you do a cup of beans and you fill it with boiling water and then you pressure can it with your meat so you have a full can or so, so it's and, kind and of a nice quick way to do the whole thing. And one of the things that we talked about is that when you're canning meat, you like doing it by the pound and that basically a pint, a, a pint jar, there's different size jars. You want to yeah. go with the pint one because that basically equates to a pound of meat. Though. Is that what? Is yes. That, that's yeah. when you're raw canning, it's nice to know that. And, and I, I'm into big batch. So I, I, uh, I like to know that when I can, I, it's a one pound per yeah. batch. So I kind of, so I can buy appropriately. Uh, yeah. I mean, then, like when we make spaghetti and stuff, we, we get a pound of, of, of ground beef for that or two pounds. So it's, it's, it seems like a great way of doing it then. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if you have a big family, then you could do them in quarts. Yeah. But if you want two pounds of meat, but other meats, not every, if anything's very fatty sausages are a little less. So what I've done is what I think is really important is I have a journal. I took an old journal when I first started this and started just writing down every time I did a recipe, something canned something, I wrote down what I did. And then in the front of the journal, I started writing down, Oh, a pound of chicken is goes into a pint jar. And then I started doing these breakfast, little breakfast sausages. I don't know if you oh. can. Yeah. So those are 12 per jar. So then I wrote, Oh, so I go to Costco too a lot. So I wrote down, I know exactly how many packages of, uh, breakfast sausages I need to buy to do two canners full of breakfast sausages. So it's really, that's the most important thing I think I've ever done was write down things that I've done. So then you can just look back and go, Oh, okay. I liked, I like this or I'd write notes. So oh, this was horrible. The, the ball canning book beef bourguignon is did not. And I'm not picky. And it was yeah. like, it, it didn't work for us anyway. It seems like one of the th things with canning meat. One, people are scared of the botulism part of it. Two, canned meat kind of looks a little looks a little intimidating too when you take a look. At it, it does. It looks disgusting, especially the raw. <laughs> the raw. I mean, it looks like it looks like I've got some kind of critter. I mean, well, I do, I guess. Yeah, um, it looks like some Hannibal like, Lecter level uh, stuff there. Yeah, That's it's the raw, especially the raw. The now the. Can um, you talk a little bit about uh, hot pack versus raw pack then? Okay. Yeah. So this hamburger has to be done. Uh, raw or sorry hamburger has to be done hot pack because i had to you have to cook this first so that the liquid can get to the pieces of hamburger if you if you imagine you put raw hamburger in a jar packed it in a jar it would be really dense well the heat you know you're is killing the botulism and other bacteria the heat can't get or they're concerned that the heat won't get to the center so they don't recommend that so hot pack is where you brown the meat or brown the chicken or any of the whatever the meat you partially cook it and maybe brown it and then you put it in the hot jars with hot water or broth and then you can them and then they it looks nicer some people say the quality is better the um what else yeah see how there's no like nothing stuck to the jar yeah. on there it's yeah. all just, you know, pretty in there. I don't know. I think it's pretty. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's all in the, no. but the, like the pork, it sticks, it like cooks on the jar. So, so yeah, it kind of it's pretty. Up, yeah. It kind of builds up a little bit on the top as far as like the fatty stuff. So uh, you want to mm -hmm. have not a lot of fat in it because I heard that that's the part. If, if something were to go a little rancid, it would be that part of it. Is that true? Uh, well, okay. This other controversial, that's yeah. what the USDA says. Okay. I, we, we told you this was going to be a controversial live stream. Yes. And, and we'll get to some of the questions. I see questions coming off all over. Oh, the okay. Okay. Um, that's good. That's good. People are interested in this. Um, so yeah, they say that. And I thought that was odd because when you look at all the good cookbooks, like ball canning has, you know, they're very like the gold standard of safety and, they say you can put a chicken with the skin on and other fatty, you know, things with fat, but then they talk about how you can't, you don't want to have fat and, and that's the not, but it's, you have to understand it's not because of a safety issue. It's because they are concerned that the, that the fat will um, ruin the seal. Mm. So the thing is like, see, here's um, ham or I've got a uh, bacon. So the yeah, bacon, right. look at how much that's a lot of fat and it's yeah. okay to have all this air space. I know your, your tuna has that too. Um, that that's fine. It's not, there's not air, it's just space. Um, and it's safe. It's safe to have it like that. So you, uh, you don't store with the ring on. So you've got the, yep. the lid and then you have the, the ring. So once you can, you sh or I make sure and take the rings off. I wash the jars and, and take the rings off because you don't want a false seal or I don't want a false seal. I'm trying not to tell you what to do. You do what you want to do. I'm just telling you what I do. <laughs> <laughs> I was told that like these, the, the, the rings around it kind of hold it in place. So if it does go bad or if it pops, you wouldn't really necessarily know about it. And that's exactly. It so as, exactly. as long as you take it off afterwards, then it makes it so it's a lot more visible to see if the seal. Yes. Goes. 
So okay. I, even from the USDA, which, you know, they're the gold standard of, of safety. Even the USDA says canned bake or the, it's not a safety. It's, it's, it is a safety in that the, the top will come off. Well, I have never, I've, I've done hundreds of jars of bacon over the last 10 years and that is never, I've never had one. I've had two jars in this whole time of both of them were chicken. So I, I, I kind of suspect that chicken fat is different on a mo hmm. molecular level that it might have a problem or, or, or maybe it was just a chip could have been anything, but I've only had two jars and, uh, and this is still solid. So, cool. um, so, and, and just, you know, everybody close your eyes and dream with me. Imagine a world where you never run out of bacon ever. I mean, can you imagine, <laughs> imagine that <Yes. laughs> that's why you need to can. Yeah. But uh, it, I there's, I, I want to make sure I don't get too backlogged in some of the comments. How about we do some rapid fire chat room uh, Go for comments here? Bring so it. Got, from, Bring uh, it. Uh, Garica. Prepping aside, as a single guy who doesn't plan ahead on meals, canning meat seems to be so incredibly helpful for time saving, not having to defrost. That sounds. Yeah. Really and exciting. if you're, I know there's athletic people who they are just people in general that you just eat for nutrition. Yeah. And, my husband, he, especially the hamburger, he likes certain aren't good bacon. You don't want to do that, but hamburger and there's other uh, things I make. There's a hamburger sauce mix. Yeah. It's yeah. like a tomato sauce and onions and things in it. And there's a, um, I love all the show and tell uh, on this. Uh, in yeah. This the show and tell this is the most show yeah. and tell. Uh, so this yeah. is beef, beef stew is yeah. in there. So you just, you know, that's a good ser size serving. So you just, yeah. If you're a single guy that, yeah. Stew is fun. Well, fun. Christmas is just around the corner. Any single guys uh, that you know, we could be giving them some. <laughs> some yeah. uh, yeah. There's another question here from Rachel Rochelle. Uh, wouldn't you have to thaw the meat entirely first? I think that's in relation to like the freezer going bad. So you would have to yeah. thaw it first before canning it then. Is that? Yes. You'd chop it up and, and thaw it. Yes. And here's, here's another one. This is uh, do you can cheese? This is, this is a meat canning uh, live stream. What's, that's the cheese one's coming up next. But. Yeah. Dairy. I love, I love dairy in all forms uh but i've never done cheese it's not recommended it's it's can be dense um yeah. so the heat can't i would think it would be a safety issue so i i'm not interested in doing that yeah and it looks like nick says only cooked meats correct no you, you could do raw pack and uh oh called? let me do i raw i pack, came raw up, pack. yeah raw pack raw pack is Raw pack is where it's at, man. You, like, you prefer the raw pack than hot pack. Then. Yeah, just because it's easier. Because yeah. uh, if you can imagine, I do 40 jars at, or almost 40 jars at a time with my two canners. And I don't want to, I, I don't want to take the time to, it's already work. I don't want to take time. So let me just really quick, I thought this would be a funny demonstration. You don't have to sterilize the jars for raw pack. You take the jar, you take, pretend this is meat, stuff the meat. Chop it up however small, big you want. Wipe the rim, put that on. You put it in your canner, yep. done. And then you do it for the pressurized, you know, for the recommended time. And that makes it easier, especially when you're doing big batches. And if you're getting roast beef, I mean, you can buy, oh, we love brisket now, but it takes a long time to chop it. So I chop it one day. And then I then when it's time to can, I just have to stuff it in the jars and away I go. Yeah, so. Cool. Uh, uh, more, a uh, lot more coming up here on chat. Uh, pressure canned meat is ninety percent of our home canned good. It's economical with a huge time saver when it comes to dinner time. That, that's awesome. Oh, good. Yes. Uh, how long does ghee uh, last? I'm trying to figure out a way of storing butter long term. Do you do? Do you do any kind of butter then? I have done butter. Um, I was thinking of giving it a try again, uh, just from all the safety stuff. They, they, they it's not recommended by the USDA. Does not rec for the same reason with the bacon. They think that the fat is gonna. Um, ruin the 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 seal um yeah. but when i did can it it had a weird it had a grainy texture to it yeah uh, and i think ghee would be uh, would be a better thing to can if it was legal but it's not legal so got it and it looks like we got a shout out here from Pe uh, peggy and dawn who we had over the last oh, peggy and dawn. Hey, hey. welcome peggy Looking and dawn live stream <laughs> uh, let's see, uh, let's see. Uh, Let's see, there's some other ones coming. Everyone seems to be there. Everyone seems to be down on the on the canning so far. So I think. Okay, no anti 
then no I'm going to kill everybody. Yeah, no, that was the one thing, and we'll talk about the botulism because that, that was one I was telling my mom. I think I was like, "Hey, yeah. I, we have a uh, Denise coming. We're going to be talking about canning meat," and she's like, "Oh, I heard of a family that they they made canned mm -hmm. meat and they killed they killed the whole family." Of a yeah. Uh, I was kind of thinking, and let's see, that was another question by Annette, is which uh, method do you prefer, uh, uh, cooked or raw pack? And you, you prefer the raw pack then? Well, unless it's hamburger, then I, then hamburger. I cook it. I, and I have to do it in two and a half pound batches. So you can imagine yeah. that took a long time, but. Can we, but yeah. uh, and it looks like Peggy, Peggy and Don is, uh, I, I'm here to see how I could can a raw steak. Do you, do you can raw steaks? Oh my gosh. Yeah. Peggy and Don, the VIP uh, chat room. <laughs> Yeah, awesome. I can show you that. Uh, you have canned well, beef, beef like, brisket. Beef brisket. And we normally do like an EDC check, and you have, you, but you you have a cans all over for different. Yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready. Are you ready, I'm ready to go? For you. you do beef brisket. Okay. I do beef. Yeah, beef brisket tastes. Oh, we went camping, and we just heated that up and had that. Oh, it was, oh, fantastic. Yeah, it does not going to taste like a steak, and that's the thing is, it's a little bit of a learning curve to to find things that are either good out of the jar or that you put a sauce on or a way to cook it. So it tastes good. Yeah. So it looks like, uh, and this is from Annette's only hamburger. But, so that's the one that you do that's cooked. Other, other than that, you're doing raw pack then. Yes. I'm yes. Even the bacon, like I, I buy bits and pieces or when it's on sale or from a restaurant supply store. So I get it cheap and then, yeah. And I just chop it up and then I, I uh, put it in there, but hamburger is the only one that I, cook first yeah and i see another one from peggy and don this is have you ever bought a bad pressure canner maybe one that's too cheap maybe we could move on to like a no. kind of ties into the equipment uh what, okay. what, what people need for equipment so and i have i have i don't have as much gear as you have there but so we have i have links in the description box below for all the things that we need but maybe we could do a quick rundown of the people that are new to meat canning or canning in general for the what are the things that they want to have for maybe for uh maybe santa claus will come this year and get them something like <laughs> Yeah, a pressure a pressure canner and a pressure canner. There you go. There's one. Yeah, that I have one just like that. It's a Presto, a Presto 20, yeah. 25 quart, I think. Yeah. The thing that's the per I think that's a perfect size because you can do you want if you're buying a canner, you want to look at how many jars you can do at one time. So mm -hmm. if you if you are really wanting to do good quality, like you want to you want to do smaller batches and and but you have a specific Thing you want you, you don't want a big one then then you can you know then a smaller one is good but the one cliff has here is that is really good because it's you can do two layers so you can do 20 pint jars at once yeah uh, or seven quarts and, and so when you said you do 40 at a time that's because you have two layers with two of these size ones and then you do 40 yes. 40 cans at once of all pint size then for your meats. Yes. So yeah. That's like, so if you get two of these, and these aren't the Prestos are uh they're more the more budget friendly ones, but they seem mm -hmm. pretty solid to compare. Uh so if you got two of these for about two hundred a little over two hundred dollars, you could do 40 uh yeah. pints in and then yeah. the other the more expensive one is to go with the all American uh mm -hmm. canner, which is really awesome and like a five star oh, so canner. Beautiful. But my first one, this this Amer all American, let me get it here. It is I'm sure older than I am. <laughs> so see the wow, lid. Look at that. Look at that. Uh, oh, let me get a let me get a close up here. There we go. Oop, oop. <laughs> so it doesn't even have the proper weight. That's okay though, because we like to use so a, so a canner is a pressure cooker. There we go. That yep. has to have a or it doesn't have to either has to have a dial or a weighted a weight that keeps the pressure uh, at the appropriate amount. Mm -hmm. oop, there we go. So, so you, we, and then you need a rack at the bottom. You don't want to put your jars on the bottom. And if you buy a used one, now, again, I started out with this ancient one and it's been great because it's just a pot. It just has to, I bought, I've replaced the, the gauge yeah. and, and I test it to make sure that it's accurate. So as, as preppers, do you think it'd be good for us to have, if we were to get a pressurized canner that they should get a backup gauge then, do you think as... Let's yeah, that backups is that well. Yeah, that would probably be good, but I think that a weighted a weight is really reliable, and it's not actually seems. I I was under the assumption a gauge was better, but most of the real good safety websites, the USDA and and Ball and stuff, say the weight the weighted ones because then it just it's it's 
now yours has a, a weight like mine that's mm -hmm. a 15 pounds. So that's not really helping. Um, but if you get a weight that's like a 10, that's regulated, so it, it holds the pressure at 10 pounds of pressure, or you can change it to make it 15 pounds of pressure if you're at a higher altitude. But if you get a used canner, look up the user's manual and read the user's manual to know how much water, because one of the things that people don't seem to understand is when you because people get used to water bath canning so they they submerge the jars completely underwater well you do not want to do that with a pressure canner you want to only usually they recommend just a couple inches mine says uh, three quarts of water you put in it so you just have enough you have enough water to uh make steam and pressure. It can't do that. That's not the, the jar submerged. It's not really under pressure if it's in the water completely submerged. Sense. So the, that's why you vent. Then they all say to vent for 10 minutes, which means you get it, the heat up and it, and you have the weight off and you let that steam. It's very important. I didn't really understand why at first I just did it. Cause that's what they said to do. Um, so you want the steam to go out of the vent because you're pushing out all the air. You want all the air out and it has completely filled with steam. So 10 minutes is ensures that it's going to have steam in there. And then it's going to, cause you're getting that all those jars at 240 degrees. And you can only do that if it's uh, steam and under pressure. Makes sense. And so, and then uh, also in the description box, you, you want to have one of these little things to be able to pick up. Oh yeah. Uh, pick it up, uh, pick up the jars like that. Yep. You don't want to use your hands yep. for that, that'll hurt. And then you also no. have the, the funnel. This one's a more inexpensive one, but we put a nice funnel in the description box for this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bigger funnel is nice. I mean, the, the, they have, they sell kits that are, that are perfectly, work perfect, but if yeah. you can get a bigger funnel, the one we I put, sent to Cliff was uh, bigger, so it's then, a little nicer. Okay, let's uh, just so I don't get backlogged too much in the in the in the chat room. Let's do another round of rapid fire uh, okay. chat room, and then let's talk about botulism. That's going to be the, the oh thing. yeah yeah yeah. Let's talk. About uh, that. Let's oh man, there's so many. Uh, uh, how much how much salt would you put in a raw pack turkey per quart jar? You, you put a you said you put a little salt in all of it though. Oh, how much salt? Oh yeah, I put half a teaspoon. And this is funny. I need to veer from this because I've just I thought about you don't have to put salt. You don't need salt is not a preservative. It's a flavor. So if you don't want salt, don't put salt. That's the other thing. You can make it how you want. And so this, what I do though, is a half, it has been worked for me. I like having a half a teaspoon of in a pint jar and a whole teaspoon of salt in a quart jar. And you can use right. whatever salt, whatever. you can use fancy whoop de doo you know, purple. <laughs> whoop de doo salt. From, from yeah, whoop de doo salt. I have, I have whoop de doo Highly salt. Highly rated. Uh, yes. <laughs> Is this one's a, what's your favorite uh, brand of canner? I, I, would, I would guess it's probably the All American canner. Though. Is that is that? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're so beautiful. Yeah, sure. that's but a great. Presto, uh, the that's presto a great wedding gift. It seems like for a couple of them. Yeah, like, yeah. The uh, presto's but, good though. Don't don't let that deter yeah. you. And a no, used one is good. Here. Yeah. Uh, the yeah, yeah. Wild game meats. Uh, you were talking about mm -hmm. that earlier. Yes. Uh, yeah. You like that. Let's see. Is the text is the texture that makes cooking with canned meat different? Oh, that's an excellent question. Yes, it is different. And that's, I think, the biggest challenge that people don't, I, I didn't think about is it's it's really soft. It's flaky or like, kind of like tuna fish, but not as flaky as tuna fish. Maybe chicken breast is the same texture. So it, it, is, a diff, it is a different texture. It can be a little, it's just a learning curve. You have to figure out which what works like for beef, beef stroganoff or, um, mm -hmm. you know, in soups is good. Um, yeah. So you, you have to, and that's the thing I, I know I've mentioned before is that you in a canner, you're doing it for the longest time. So like the beans and the, and you could do different types of meat. So I recommend do, you know, whatever you think you would like chicken or pork or beef, whatever ones you think you want, just try some different ones because it all processes the same time. Okay, so you can so you could have so in your batch of forty that you're doing with your two pre like if you had two prestos and you had them mm -hmm. double layered and you had forty mm -hmm. pint size, you could have a bunch of them with ground beef. You could have uh, 
some some of the stews that you have. You could have raw raw packed chicken and, and other things, and they all yeah. come out at the same time. Doesn't matter. So. Yes, yeah, they're all processed same so time, it's and they don't. Like it's got a sous vide kind of cooking where it's it's yeah yeah. Yeah, that's right. Oh, see, you're getting all the the language to yeah, make well, it. Yeah, I watch I watch Top Chef and some other shows. Oh, there you go. Uh, there, there's a man, man, a lot of a lot of yeah. Uh, this is from Heads and Tails Living. Yeah, yeah. Get get extra seals and gaskets because and they're hard to get nowadays. This is one yes. from the Apex Prepper. This is. Do you mix different types of canning in the same batch, meaning meats with fruits, meat with fruits? Is there an issue with potential cross contamination? Yeah, not cross contamination, but if you process something that doesn't take that's a fruit, it could over process or or uh, just the texture it might make it into like mush and and you really don't need to do that with fruits they're high enough acid that botulism doesn't um uh won't can't live in that environment so if you have a, a fruit and a sugary like a syrup or something you can and and you can use your pressure canner as a water bath canner you can just um plunge the stuff down instead of having a, a rack that comes out, which doesn't really work anyway. You just have your rack at your uh, plate at the bottom that keeps it off the bottom of the canner for a little bit. And you just take your jar lifter and just put them in there. So I, if you're going to do it, I would recommend not getting the, if you haven't already bought a canner for water bath, you can use a pressure canner for water bath canning if you want. Yeah. So I saw that someone's asking about, uh, can you can, where would I see that in the chat room? It's something about fast food. <laughs> like, can you can fast food? Uh, where'd that go? I saw it here. <laughs> uh, good to see Peggy and Don are still here. Uh, uh, let's see. Let's. You you were talking about it briefly there. Maybe we should get into the topic of botulism because I know that you okay. you've done some research. Uh, that's like the main concern with most people. My mom was concerned about it. Uh, I think most besides the the kind of scary look and the texture, the botulism mm -hmm. is the thing that we don't want to. We yeah, we don't want to kill our family. Yeah. No, yeah, no, we don't. So, uh, no. so let's let's talk about botulism then. Botulism okay. with Denise. That's going to be your yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Okay, there we go. <laughs> okay, so botulism is so fascinating. It is the same thing that they inject in the people's faces to to make their wrinkles go away. It's also used medically for uh, if anything. Anytime somebody needs a. a muscle paralyzed for whatever reason they uh they're having um uh, i don't know issues anyway they inject them with so it's used medically which is i find fascinating but uh it botulism is a bacteria that grows way underground it grows in a oxygen no oxygen anti an, anti anaerobic environment it uh does not survive out well it survives but it goes into stasis like when it comes out in the oxygen isn't that amazing that this little bacteria can't handle oxygen <laughs> find that fascinating yeah. so it's it's like a a potato but we eat we eat the the bacteria it's in it's probably not as prevalent as yeast and mold but we do consume botulism yeah there's a, well, there you go that's like a yeah, so like it's it's like Botox, but botulism. Then. Yeah, what happens is if you consume it, which I guess is good to know too. This is the scary part. It um, if you're getting botulism poisoning, it usually affects your face first. That's where they're showing with that boy that mm -hmm. it, it 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 starts paralyzing your face, and then if you don't get treatment, it can uh, affect your lungs and your heart. And it'll, it'll so it paralyzes muscle. That's why it's so scary, and it you should. We should be scared of it, but I can tell you uh, how to how to completely be safe. So, the botulism. I was gonna say, yeah. Please bacteria. tell us. Please, please tell us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that's, that's my whole secret. No, uh, <laughs> no. The the botulism bacteria grows underground, and when it comes out, uh, if it's dug up, you know, we dig a. a dig or whatever it comes comes up for whatever reason it's it's a lot on plants so it's funny that people are more concerned about meat because really uh botulism is root vegetables is what it's on more than than anything because they grow in the ground but but you still need to be you know you still need to do everything with meat also um it's not something to play around with but it so when it comes out into the an oxygen 
an environment with oxygen, it like goes into stasis. It, it doesn't do anything. So it's kind of like a potato. You know, if you take a potato, dig it up, and then it, and then you can store it for a long time. But then if you put it in the right environment, it with water or something, it grows a plant. Uh, and that plant is toxic. You don't want to eat the potato plant. It'll make you sick. What happens with botulism when you put it in a... Let me look at make get my notes here. Yeah, low acid, so no sugar or vinegar, like water bath canning, mm -hmm. in moisture and airtight, that is what makes it grow spores that are toxic. So we're putting it in this perfect environment for it to grow when you can, if you can it in, in that. Mm -hmm. So what the way to kill it, and what's hard is it doesn't... Uh, it doesn't, you cannot kill the bacteria unless you get up to 240 degrees, then it kills the, the bacteria. And then what I thought was interesting is, okay, so one of the things lots of people say, and this is what I did when I first started canning, I took and said, okay, I also know that if I put it in water and, or cook it for, there's a, people say between five minutes and 20 minutes, if it kills the they'll say it kills the botulism, but what it's killing is the spores, the toxic part. So if you're, if you're really anxious when you first start canning, you can be confident that if you cook something for 10 minutes, that's pretty much the standard, everybody says 10 minutes, then it will kill the toxin and you're safe. They used to say in the old times, like I know, especially green beans, people would say, oh, you know, cook it, I know uh, my family, older family members would even commercially can stuff. They would cook green beans for 10 minutes. And that, so, so that will kill the toxin. So you have to can uh, appropriately. You have to not put too much, follow the instructions. And the USDA does a really good job. Their website is actually really good about ex explaining the process of canning easily. I also recommend going through reading everything and then making a checklist like, oh, I need to check the lid first. I need to, you know, check the seal. If you're using the Presto style one with a rubber gasket, I need to, um, you know, then just write notes because they give you so much information, which is good. But I think it's also nice to have a little checklist like you do this then you, you do this, you, oh, I gotta make sure and wipe the rim. And a lot of people say wipe the rim when you put the food in, you wanna wipe the top mm -hmm. of this with, especially with the uh, vinegar is a cloth dipped in vinegar because it'll uh, wipe off any fat. If there's fat from the meat that you're stuffing in there, um, it, will, it will ensure a better seal. Uh, so yeah, then you just, you, you uh, follow the instructions, know, you know, make sure you know what you're doing. Uh, the other thing is, which I know that link to Prepper Popery was saying yeah, you get that, one. that the CDC, the United States Center for Disease Control, keeps track of every botulism case, which is uh, good. And they say... They, they average out that the annually in the United States, we have an average for the whole United States, 27.5 people get botulism. So if you think of the five in 330 million, then yes. Yeah. Okay. So the whole population of the United States, 330 million people averages per year. Tw yeah. There's the list of, and she, go, she, it's really interesting. She goes through and says exactly what people, how they got it. Cause it's not okay. all food born. It's not all people. Um, it's not all from can, home canned food. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's from canned meat too. So we're, cause I, right. I know that you have to be careful with tomatoes. Like we made a, a tomato yes. salsa and I didn't, and uh, my sister-in-law is the one that, Hey, don't, don't mess around with the tomatoes. Cause those could be, that could get you. Yeah. Sick. Tomatoes are, are right at the, right at the edge of being acidic enough. So a lot of times people will add a little splash of vinegar or, or some um, like they'll say the, the recipes will recommend and the, the more recent tomatoes don't have as much acid. So 
they recommend putting, or you could pressure can them too. You, you could just pressure can them, but I've always just water bath canned tomatoes because I put lemon juice in it to up the acidity. Cool. So, uh, awesome. So there's, we have information that it's in the description box on this one to look into more of it, but so far hasn't been a problem, obviously for, for you. So, uh, cool. So there's awesome stats. Uh, look like I'm backlogged on the chat oh. room again. Let's do, let's do some more rapid fire. Okay. Uh, Okay, so and I think we talked a little bit about this uh, in New York Defined. If this whole can if this whole canning thing is absolutely foreign to someone, what would be the first thing to purchase? And I, I imagine uh, e either a water bath or a, or a pressurized canner, right? Yeah, I would get a kit. get a pressure canner. Yeah, get a pressure canner, and then you really need the tools. The all you need is the the thing to grab the jars out because they're going to be hot. It, yep, there you go, and a uh, funnel. Well, I guess you don't even technically need a funnel. And then you just get a case of jars. The jars and are going to be the tough thing from, from what we've been finding out. So. Right now, yeah. Although, uh, yeah, yeah. Cool. And then uh, there's there someone I was asking about uh, the type of meals. This is from, uh, let's see, uh, Denisha. This oh. is, what meals do you make with the meat oh. you have canned? I'm struggling there. And I really like the yes. idea of the having ground beef can because then then you could use it with your spaghetti sauce that you that you stock and you could do it for uh, tacos or whatever that mm -hmm. seems like a really good one to do uh what are the meals that you recommend well i, I so funny i'm like okay pork and barbecue sauce barbecue pork sandwiches. pork sandwiches yeah pork pork sandwiches. I put on I love it. yeah i did on pulled pork or i did on the discord server i put a canning uh, meat math, like any meat with taco seasoning makes taco meat. Any meat with enchilada sauce, you have enchiladas, bam. Uh, any meat with teriyaki sauce, you have chicken teriyaki. Chicken with Alfredo sauce and and maybe a little Parmesan cheese, bam. You've got, I mean, it takes like 10 minutes. I mean, you could make the meat sauce faster than you could do the pasta. Ground uh, uh, meat, I know, maybe make a chili mac where it's all in one pot. Ground meat, tomato sauce, corn, taco seasoning, pasta, cook it, and you in 10 minutes you're ready, you've got chili mac. Yeah. Chicken with mixed vegetable, chicken and dumplings. You know, there's, um, yeah, it's in it, but it is, it's a learning curve. It's learn, you know, well, I think it's really cool that you, you guys are integrating into the normal meals that you have, and it, it helps speed up the cooking time and everything like that, which is, I mm -hmm. think that's like the way to go. Yeah, uh, I say I can uh, make a meal faster than running to fast food. Yeah. So, and uh, people are still, it looks like they're commenting about the botulism thing. Botulism? Oh, I would have never let thought. Me, yeah. Uh, it's, yeah. Did you have, you got something else on the botulism? Well, I just wanted to, oh, just, just quick say that the, botulism it's also from potatoes people who who wrap uh, you know wrap a potato up and don't uh they bake it doesn't kill the botulism then mm. they store it like at room temperature or kind of in a warm not in maybe the refrigerator too they say you can get botulism from that yeah you and fermented meats like uh, uh people in alaska the native people there have a, a special foods that they make that are from fermented fish and they used to they put it in the ground and they the the people who used to always do it would put it in like a grass so it wasn't completely sealed well the modern people have said oh it, let's put it in plastic which makes total sense that they want to put it in plastic to make it cleaner and put it in the ground well but the problem with that is it um it air makes it airtight which grows the spores of the botulism so they are learning to not do that but those numbers of fermented fish are in so if you ferment fish you have to do it properly <laughs> yeah uh th th another one for peggy and don this is a so we could can raw we could can can raw meats by cooking it yeah so the, yeah, and, cooks and, and denise it. likes the the raw pack other than ground beef from what we said here so yeah uh, let's see. Uh, let's do some more rapid fire. Uh, a lot of people seem to be already into it. 90 minutes for raw meat under pressure. It's easy. Uh, we love our American canner. That's from Xbox Gaming. Iron e I love Iron Eagle, by the way. Uh, uh, add a little vinegar to my water. Uh, Pepper Lane. Uh, 90 minutes for court. Yeah. So everyone's kind of commenting on that one. Let me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, man, still trying to catch up. Let's see. What's this one say? Thanksgiving time is the best time when many of these things are advertised on sale, like giant deep fried pots. Are, do you, are, you were talking about one of your goals is to do a, a turducken, a canned. Yeah. Turducken. Turducken. Is, that, is, is that a, is that true? Is this, is this rumor true? 
from a tree. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna put a layer of chicken, a layer of turk or a duck, and then a layer of turkey, and then maybe a little bacon on top. And then that I seems can... like a viral video waiting to happen. So, and <laughs> I, I know that we've been we've been talking for a while for about 53 minutes. Are you, now, uh, folks in the chat room, would you like to have Denise start? I think you need to start a YouTube <laughs> channel. It could be the Bachelor's uh, Prepper or the Can. The Bachelor's Prepper. <laughs> But it seems like yeah, because we know how to make it. We also yeah. we know how to we, we know how to make it. You know, in case yeah. you know. I, yeah, let, let, let us know in the chat room if you think that uh, Denise should start her a YouTube channel on canning. <laughs> I, I think she should. So, uh, let's see, this is one. Uh, uh, does Denise have a favorite canning book? Oh, ball the ball canning. The ball, yeah, I think. Yeah, the, 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 the they have two, but the the standard one. Yeah. Yeah, that's my favorite. This but, one, another one yeah. from, from Garrick, uh, who we talked to earlier. Uh, besides ground beef, when would you hot pack versus canning meat raw? Seems e easier to cook now and just have it heat up later. But when you when you pressurize can it, it cooks it, right? It cooks it. Yeah, it's cooked meat. This this chicken I put in was raw. raw. Yeah, bre chicken breast raw, chopped up raw. Now it's cooked. I could eat this. I'd be I'm fine eating it right out of the out of the jar. Yeah. Uh, any uh, any recommendations on good canned soups? Oh yeah, oh yes, right here. <laughs> How many jars do you have around you right now? Do you have? Do I have two cases. <laughs> yeah, two cases. So this is beef. This is fun to can. Actually, see the nice big potatoes. This beef stew. Let me get a close up of that one. There we go. Yeah. So I put. So what I did is I put beef. These. This is nice because you can. You take the. You know your how many quarts your canner or liters, these are also called liters. You know how many quarts your canner can hold, like typically seven. Most canners hold seven. So you line up seven quarts, then you put whatever you want because if you, the carrots and potatoes by themselves would can for a less lower amount of time, but because there's meat in it, you're gonna can it for the, the full time. So then you can put in, you can add, um, meat you can do some with chicken some with beef and like i love these potatoes you could do carrots uh, you could do you know you could do them all different however you think you want and then you just either put like these had about a quarter cup of this beef broth that i'd made and then i just added water and a little salt yeah so uh, that's the soup oh, also a, um wendy's so wendy's <laughs> recommending you start a channel we got that uh, rachel <laughs> rochelle is saying start a channel i think cascadia preparedness could see you cascadia preparedness uh the, the high pressure meat channel that I like that. That's a, that's good. Uh, let's see what else do we have here? Uh, I, I like this one, this one on the can canned chicken can be used for soups, chicken salad, or anywhere you would add cooked meat to. I use canned hamburger for fast, fast, easy shepherd pie. Besides those ideas. That was, oh, yeah. yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I have a, on the discord, I have a prepper pie recipe. That's all uh, prepper pie. Pantry. Oh, prepper, prepper pie. Prepper pie. That sounds awesome. <laughs> Well, no, I, but it's shepherd's pie with just pantry items. Yeah, that's a, that's that, there's another another video for the new channel. Again, high pressure meat channel. Stay tuned for on YouTube. That's coming coming soon, featuring Denise on yeah. that. So, uh, we've been going for a little bit now. I want to uh, uh, what I what sounds really cool about the, what appeals to me besides uh, it's an interesting topic and it looks cool too is that <laughs> for. I'm tired of buying like the, the expensive mountain house, number 10 cans of fake meat and stuff like that. It seems mm -hmm. like it's so, it would be really cool to, to have, I don't, let's say a hundred, a hundred cans of, of meat ready to go for emergency. You could have it on the shelf on the shelf. And it, how long would like the, the ground beef and the chicken all, all that last uh, in a can like this? Well, technically it would last forever. Uh, if it's long, as long as the seals, as long as it's still sealed, it's, sterilized in that jar that jar whatever's in there has been sterilized if you did it properly for the amount of time you're supposed to the the texture or the quality goes down most people seem to say after three years okay they they think and that's kind of what i try well, to do is rotate 18 years this is <laughs> yeah well it'd be interesting in uh to see what that's like but i i would feel safe eating that yeah, and then uh, let's see. Uh, this is from Peg Peggy and Don again. This is a. Uh, can you look at a jar and say that's a good one? How? Uh, you, you think they're all good as long as the seal's good? Oh, they're it's all good. beautiful. They're all or, unique, if, beautiful. If you can meet a beautiful recipes. Thing. Yeah, recipes waiting to happen. This, uh, this is one. Uh, what about storage? 
I just stored in my our closet. Uh, we we have um, the only place we have a small house, so the only place I can put it is uh, or the best place we found is in our our uh, clothes closet in our bedroom. We just put shelves mm -hmm. up. John made some real sturdy shelves, so we have it. And then I just when I put a because uh, I put them back in the um, let me see here. I put them back in the box they came in, and then I put a label on the outside that just says what it is, like bacon, and then the year that it was, so I can see, so I can see right away. Oh, that's 2018. Uh, like this chicken is 2018. My daughter, well, I don't, I'm not a big chicken breast fan, but now we're needing to eat this up because. And then I like to use an Excel spreadsheet and just put the. There we go. The label because if you're doing a bunch of jars, it's. I don't know. To me, I, instead of writing, I just like to print these out and tape them on really quick. Just that's no big deal, though. That's just how I like to do it. Cool. Yeah. Uh, more questions here. There, uh, let's see. People want me to open up the can. The the. the... <laughs> right. uh, that's I if think, you guys. Yeah. I think I should say that's for some kind of a special contest here. Yeah. Me. There you go. Yes. Yeah. I've stuff. It looks gross. It it takes a. Some of it looks especially if you can chicken with the skin on it looks disgusting no, I, but I mean, it's I, so it good any worse than the emergency food ration bars that i've eaten so <laughs> how about, no, but, uh, i don't know how we're doing on this video as far as the likes but if you, if you guys are liking this video and if you're if you didn't happen to watch it live make sure that you smash that like button uh and how about maybe we could do something if we reach a certain amount of likes i'll, I'll eat this 18 year old uh uh canned tuna how about how about yeah, that yeah that's awesome uh that, that would be fun I, so <laughs> uh i don't know what's what's a good number of likes for this video I we'll we'll figure that out <laughs> okay uh let's see our rings off to don't know don't open a can of worms that's fine. yeah the uh, chicken though the skin oh, i'm saying it looks bad but I've done, started canning bone in chicken thighs. And when you open it up, you know, that it kind of fillets out naturally, you put the skin side down in a pan and brown it. And then as it's browning, you take the bone is easy to remove. Oh my goodness. That meat is so good. I can't even, ah, it's so good. Yeah. Let's see. What's, what is this? What's the benefit of the jars where they don't have the other part to it? Like the rig part. Uh, uh, maybe they're talking about the, these, I can it with the, with the ring on. Yep. Um, and then the other thing we talked, we were, haven't really mentioned is the glass, you know, you know, it's, you know, uh, you're, you're not getting anything like canned foods. You don't know what is the reacting to the, um, uh, inside of the can. So it's really safe. And let's see, here's another one. Uh, did I get the right one? Uh, can you pressure can with an all-in-one lid? Now, I remember there was, a, I think we were talking about this on the Discord server where they were talking about the, the one little lid with the metal piece. That, yeah, that, in, I don't know if that's uh, they're in Europe, it seems like, have those more, but they, I, I don't see why not. They're That's what they're made for. They're just the ring and the lid. I just don't like the, I wouldn't use those because I want to take the ring off so I can tell that it's, I would imagine those would be even a, more difficult to know if their seal has been broken. Um, I would, yeah, I wouldn't use those. Cool. Uh, let's see what this, uh, Dan says, they're starting to eat canned chickens from 2013 just now. So that's yeah. the seven year old chicken. Uh, this yeah. is a kind of a cool question. This is from, from Fine Ass Amy Fresh. Uh, what is the most unusual food that you've canned? Now, not counting the uh, the turducken, which is in the works, but what's the- oh, Yes, in the works, it's in the works. Um, I don't know. I don't, I do all my hunting at, at the grocery store. So I haven't done anything really exotic. Oh, I did do, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I got it. The, um, the, we have a big grocery store that sells 40, anyway, it's a 40 pound box of chicken legs. I'm into like inexpensive. So I took the chicken legs. I thought, Oh, I'll just can up chicken legs. I've seen people do it online and the recipes and stuff. But when you try to put chicken, you can only get like three of them in there. So I took a cleaver and just started chopping off the about a third of the bottom because and um, and then so then I've got these little, like round balls of chicken with bone in and they tasted the meat just like the 
the chicken thighs, that meat is so tasty and succulent and just delicious, but it's hard to cook because there's extra little bones in a, in a chicken drumstick. And there's a lot of cartilage too. So you have to kind of pull them They take a lot of, not a lot, but more than I want to, to pull them apart where the chicken thighs, you just pull the bone out. There's maybe a little gristle, but um, you still get that good tasty meat. But yeah, so chicken legs with the bottom half chopped off. I, yeah, that was probably the oddest thing I've done. So, okay. So we're, it seems like we're getting to the, towards the end of the live stream. So, okay. We've talked about, we've talked about your background with it. We talked about all the supplies that we need. We talked, we talked about why we should can meat. We talked about botulism and we mm -hmm. talked about the uh, raw pack versus hot pack. So we've, we've given, you've given them all this information. What's their first step now? Just go and have a canning party with their family and friends. Is that get the supplies and go, go do it? Yeah. If, yeah. You just have to do it. You need to, to read the, the on the website of the Food and Drug Administration website that we link to, because it's quick, it's easy. Uh, you need if you can borrow a canner, a pressure canner, that would be great. And then, re but read the instruction. Any canner that you use, read the instruction manual on how to properly operate it, and make sure to to vent it. But uh, yeah, and, and I would maybe, I mean, I know some people are gung-ho and want to buy two. You can buy, you know, you do whatever you want, but you just buy one to see how you like it. That's what we did is I bought a, my All-American, I bought for $30 and then I replaced the, the gauge, which is only about the dial gauge. Wait, it was only you bought about the All-American for $30? $30, yeah. Wow. It's ancient though. Okay, it's, so old one. it's older than me. I well, think okay. <laughs> it's pretty old. Because yeah, I know, because so, when you get uh, now, I, I don't know if the price has gone up, but they seem like they're going for like three hundred dollars or something like that nowadays for the which the all American canner. Oh yeah, yeah. The to new ones, yeah, yeah. The new, but it they're they last forever, and uh, and even the Presto, if you get one of those used, you can replace the gasket, replace the plug. That they're not very expensive online. Replace the dial if you you know, we're using the, the dial or have it checked for the, the right um, pressure that it's under the right pressure. Yeah. You can definitely use a, I, I wouldn't be afraid to, uh, obviously I have a used one. Then we liked it so much. So I started out with one. I realized, Oh, this is something I want to do. And if I'm going to all this work, I might as well do two batches at the same time. And uh, yeah. yeah, we do. We call it our uh, prepper date night. John is really good at regulating because you have to adjust the heat to make the temperature. He's really good at doing that. And uh, so then we watch a movie in the kitchen because you have to stay in. The, you have to be in the kitchen. It's a, it's a very romantic leave. date night. Uh, for, yes, for sure. <laughs> yes. So special, but oh, it's it's fun. It is fun to do. To, I mean, all joking aside, it's kind of a neat. It, thing a, to do together have, but yeah we had fun doing our because we recently did a, a prepper pickle project and but we, we weren't doing meats at the time it, it, it was kind of fun i thought to do to do all that it was like a fun experiment and we got it was fun eating all the stuff afterwards uh well the uh, more you do too the fat the easier it gets you know where you put the lids where you put the everything you know where you take the jars out you get it's easier the more you do it Cool. So let's let's do a couple. Well, let me. Uh, this is one uh, cor uh, cor uh, Cornish hen in a quart jar. That sounds awesome. Uh, yeah, this if is you one can fit it in there. Uh, do, you, do you peel potatoes before canning? Nope. No. Okay. Uh, yeah. They Annette says it. Yeah. If the Cornish hen would fit, yeah, that sounds good. Uh, this is from Prepper Lane. When you pack, when you raw pack, save the broth. It's excellent on rice. Uh, yes. 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 Somebody in this house, I won't mention John's name, but he <laughs> wants to throw out. The <laughs> Well, he just is like, oh, okay, I'll just drain it in the sink. And I freak, you know, it's only like a a cup full, but I just like, ah! It's, uh, all American are good as gold, family fun. Uh, Denisha, thank you for dropping by for this one. Uh, pickles, sauerkraut, we really like the sauerkraut. That was a, I know it's not neat, but hear, hear a little kitty cat in the background too. So. Oh, yeah. Uh, this has been so cool and informative. Thank you so much for sharing your knowledge. Uh, this is the most unusual thing. This was a fish one over here. Let's see. Any, uh, oh, here's, a, here's a here's a here's a cool one. Uh, any tips related to lid or screw ring rust? Oh yeah, they they do wear out after. So the so the nice thing about the two parts is you only have to buy the lids, the the you know the the lid part every time you can. You can't reuse mm -hmm. these, but the rings you use over and over. But eventually, 
yeah, mine are kind of getting a little rusty. I've been, I probably need to buy some, but I've done like, yeah, a lot of, a lot of, they've been through a lot. Uh, great job. And I'm excited to try. So I think, I think you've convinced a ton of people to try yes. meat canning. We, we yeah. didn't think it could be done. We thought this was going to be a controversial one. Uh, well, hopefully like you won't get banned. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully the botanism didn't ban get, get, get the algorithms catch me on that one. Uh, this is really romantic. This is by Prepper Lane. My husband and I can every Saturday. It's, it's one of dates. That's that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, uh, so uh, let's let's do. It's a great time to watch a movie because you have to be in there and you could you don't have to be watching it constantly, but you have to every couple minutes make sure the pressure is right. Yeah. This one maybe a final question here from uh, Monique. Oh, this is: good. Do you can do you cook onions before pressure canning? Someone told me the onions could cause spotulism. Is that true? Well, in yeah, any root is probably I think has botul. Yeah, but you don't, you're, you're, it doesn't matter. I do. like. Okay. I'm an onion. I love onions, but in my, uh, in my beef stew, I started cooking it before just because of the flavor. Something about boiled onion has a odd to me flavor. And that's what happens when you start just practicing doing that. So yeah, I do cook the onions, but not for safety reasons. You could definitely put a raw onion. Well, cool. So everyone, we've been talking about canned meat for over an hour now. It's been a, <laughs> it, it, We could talk about it more. I know Denise has more things to say. Uh, I, I see a comment here. Uh, Discord. Are we going to Discord? Is there after hours party at, party at Discord? I, I think maybe I could drop by for yeah. a little bit. I'm go uh, I'll be there. So if you're watching this in real time and you st and we didn't get to your question, go click on the Discord link. It's in the description box below. And uh, you could talk with Denise more about canning. And, uh, and I'll swing by there as well. So that should be a lot of fun. We have a lot of links available in the description box of this video. Mm -hmm. So we have links to the pressurized canner and all the accessories that you need. There's also some informational ones. Make sure that you check out uh, the USDA article that was uh, this is provided yes. by Denise here for the complete guide to home canning. Check out Prepper Popery's video on the uh, botulism facts, not yeah. fear. Uh, go to YouTube and check out Alaska, Alaska Prepper, who's going to be coming on the live stream coming uh, next month. I believe, and uh, oh, we're, we're working on the scheduling on that. He has a lot of great videos on uh, on meat canning, as you can see, a lot of examples there too. And uh, if you want to talk more with Denise, we're going to be hopping over to the Discord server for a little bit. There's a little uh, a stream hang that we go to afterwards, and we'll talk a little bit more. So uh, well, this has been a lot of. We have a yeah. channel on Discord for canning too. If you have yeah. questions later, later on, you can ask awesome. me. Yeah, or anybody. Well, I'm super excited. I think my wife and I are definitely going to. My goal is, I think, to, I'd like to have a hundred cans of. Um, yeah. So hundred pounds of meat in, in pint-sized jars. So. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So that that's my goal. I think for uh, the, the coming up. So I think we're going to have to have some date night prep canning yep. parties as well. Yep. Get, get, get a bottle good. of wine and yeah. Yeah. Get a, <laughs> get, get some wine and some uh, some canning. So how about uh, I know a lot of people want me to eat this. How about if this video gets a uh, how about a thousand likes? Can we get a thousand <laughs> likes on meat canning? It's it's never been done before. If we could do a thousand likes on meat canning, I'll, I'll definitely eat this can in front of everyone right. and, and enjoy it. So <laughs> I'll go tell uh, my friends. Yeah. So make sure you smash. That like oh I saw a Bernie's over here he's been kicking he's been banning people left and right uh, let me get Bernie really quick but, uh, uh, Bernie is there anything that I missed b before we uh, hop off here so thank you I, well first and foremost uh, I am the one who asked the silly question on uh, the fast food can you can fast food like you know chicken McNuggets or uh, I don't know a, a Whopper no. you know no, something like that no no, no. <laughs> oh well, I, I forbid it. <laughs> oh, uh, little little Miss Preppers do the cameo appearance for. Yeah, you can say hi. Hello. You're, you're live with a lot of people. Hello. Go oh, hello. <laughs> okay. All right, folks. Well, <laughs> I can have ice cream. Uh, you can have ice cream a little after the stream. Okay. <laughs> okay. <that's, laughs> well, I hope that you guys enjoyed watching this live stream. This is a lot of fun. Hope, uh, hopefully, the botulism thing doesn't get me flagged on YouTube. I don't think it will. I think we're cool. Uh, you guys, should, we should all be canning more. I think as preppers, uh, I'm I'm just now starting to get into it. My wife's been canning. She probably has 500 of <laughs> these jars of of, uh, of jam all over the place, and now we're we're making our prepper pickles too. Uh, but this is our next adventure: is the canned meat. We thank you so much for Denise for coming on the stream to talk and uh, talking with us all about it smash that like button folks and uh, hopefully denise starts her channel very soon high pressure <laughs> prepper uh canned meat channel or whatever it is uh the botulism prepper, prepper pie prepper pie i like the prepper, prepper pie. pie uh if you're watching if you're uh 
if you didn't happen to watch this live, make sure you, if you like it, make sure you smash that like button. After a thousand likes, I'll eat that tuna. And then uh, and then if you're watching this live and you want to talk more, watch hop over to the Discord server for a little bit. We'll talk some more about canned meat. So everyone, thanks for the support. A lot more uh, awesome guests coming up on the live stream. We have Canadian Prepper. Uh, we have both Canadian Prepper and City Prepping coming out at the same time. Uh, we have, uh, we're working on Alaskan Prepper. There, there, there's all sorts of, all sorts of preppers are coming on the show. So uh, this has been a blast. So uh, thanks everyone again for the support and stay tuned for more videos. Uh, thanks again, Denise, for, for coming and talking with us about meat canning. All right, guys, stay safe, everyone. Thank you.